Straight from Hope Ministry Sanctuary, Pastor Rolf here, blessings to you all another beautiful day given to us from above. I want to share this morning with you, this testimony came from Michael, a true example of God's perfect healing powers. He has found a new life sober and serving God. Here are his own words written to me to share with you. I hope and pray you find this testimony helpful. My name is Michael, and this is my story. I won't go into many details about my childhood, but I will let you know that it was a good one. My parents met in high school and are happily married to this day. That's not to say though that my actions and choices, inside of the 12 years I was in addiction, hadn't caused them considerable grief and embarrassment. By the age of 31, I had progressed from alcohol and marijuana to cocaine, acid, crack, and finally meth. I considered myself to be a functioning addict. I lied to myself for years saying I was self-medicating, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I had opened a spiritual doorway into my life when I started messing around with altering the state of my mind. I thought I was enlightening myself, and if I had had any wisdom, or even common sense, at all I would have looked at the fruits, my pursuits brought forth and seen poverty, estrangement from loved ones, sexual promiscuity, a foul mouth, general despair, isolation and delusion. The doctors think I got a hold of some bad dope, and maybe it was, all I know is that within a few hours of having smoked that stuff I was entering into the most difficult months of my life. Difficult not only for me, but also my mother, father, brother and sister as well. There's a fog of paranoia surrounding most drug use, even slight psychosis where you think you hear things in the sound of a fan or the hum of your fridge. What happened to me was not that. I heard two female voices speaking, they were clear voices, and they were loud. These two voices spoke as if I was not there, as if I could not hear them. They were always plotting against the people I loved, planning to do them financial and even physical harm. At message I would hear the things they had been planning taking place, like it was happening. I could hear screams and gunshots and saws. I couldn't accept that what I was hearing wasn't real, or that it wasn't about to become real. I reacted emotionally to what I heard. I would drive at 100 miles per hour to my parents' house in the middle of the night to make sure they were, okay, to prove that it really was just in my fractured in mind. This lasted about seven months until thankfully I was arrested. I thought my parents hated me, that they wanted me dead. I tried hanging myself in jail with a sliver of blanket I had found ripped off in my cell. I thought that's why that strip of blanket was placed there t. The guards put me on suicide watch, and the jail doctor put me on medicine that numbed me emotionally. I would still hear the voices for months to come, but on the meds I no longer cared what I heard and it was in jail that I started to pray. I would lay face down on the floor in my cell and cry and ask God to help me. My father thought I should be institutionalized, but I knew in my heart that I needed to get right with my heavenly father more than I needed a doctor or medication. I can't explain how I knew that I just did. My mother found out about the Hope Center, and I know that God led her to it. The next day I was on a plane headed to Oklahoma from Tennessee. Hope Center is 49 locations nationwide, but Oklahoma is where I was told I should go by the fella on the phone and that was God ordained. It was a safe place, with kind people, I was ministered to, and I saw God working in people's lives. As for me, I went by God, he renewed my mind, healed my body and restored my soul. The doctor said I was bipolar and schizophrenic, I was on antipsych meds when I arrived, and they said I would be on them, the rest of my life. Today I take no medications. I am balanced and happy. I cling to my Lord and Savior and have made his priorities my own. The peace and purpose that permeates my days could only come from the Lord, and I thank him for everything he has done for me and my family by living my life for Jesus. I'm an intern for Hope Center now, and I speak on the phone to hurting families, to men and women struggling with hurts, habits and hang up. I get to encourage them and help guide them towards a relationship with Jesus. My relationship with my parents has been restored. I speak with them both every day. I have good friends that care about me and a supportive church family. It's my hope that by sharing this story that someone else who is going through a dark place will hear it and ask Jesus for help too. Thank you Michael and God bless you. May God always bless you and may you all go through life with Jesus Christ in your life.